A serious conundrum for evolutionary theory is the complex and interdependent relationships between many scores of living things. This relationship is called symbiosis. Symbiosis is the condition in which completely different forms of life utterly depend upon each other in order to survive. The conundrum is this. Darwin's theory of biological change, or evolution, was based upon competition, or survival of the fittest, among the individuals making up a species. According to evolution, living organisms or intricately complex systems within those organisms should not evolve to depend upon each other in order to survive. In fact, Darwin admitted, quote, if it could be proved that any part of the structure of any one species had been formed for the exclusive good of another species, it would annihilate my theory, for such could not have been produced through natural selection or evolution. Symbiotic relationships pose such a challenge to Darwin's theory, since these relationships require that animals and plants of different species must cooperate for the benefit of both. Evolutionists call this coadaptation, but they have yet to come up with a plausible, logical, and scientifically verifiable explanation of how such relationships could have evolved in long periods of evolutionary stages. How can plants that need certain animals to survive have existed before those animals appeared in the first place? And how do animals that need other animals to survive arrive without their partners arriving at the exact same moment? Just one example of beneficial symbiosis, often called mutualism, is found between algae and the fungus of lichens. While fungi provide vital protection and moisture to algae, the algae nourish the fungi with photosynthetic nutrients that keep them alive. As the biology textbook Contemporary Biology puts it, quote, neither population could exist without the other, and hence the size of each is determined by that of the other. So which came first, algae or fungi? Since neither could exist without the other, according to evolution, for both to survive, they had to evolve independently of each other, yet appear at exactly the same time and with precisely the right functions. How could two completely different species evolve separately from distinct ancestors, yet at the same time depend on one another to exist? The problem truly is an evolutionary conundrum. There are many other scores of examples of living things and or complete systems within a single living system that utterly depend upon one another in order to survive. One cannot exist without the other. For example, the human body contains 12 interdependent systems. If even one system is removed, except the reproductive system, you would die. Can a human being live without the circulatory system? or the endocrine system, or the elimination system, or the skeletal system, or the nervous system? Of course not. The obvious conclusion is that these systems had to have appeared at the same time, in 100% functionality and interdependence in order for the human body to function and to live. Yet, evolution says that organisms and systems develop gradually over millions and even billions of years. If the object of evolution is survival, why would evolution processes determine that an organism needed to become more and more complex to the point that if even one of its complex systems or symbiotic relationships shut down or disappeared, that it would die? By evolution's own theory, this makes no sense. If you want some real entertainment, Read an evolution article which attempts to explain symbiotic relationships among living organisms. Count how many times the article uses the words more than likely, maybe, probably, perhaps, and it could have. In other words, the evolutionists don't have a clue how the process of evolution accounts for the complex symbiotic relationships so prolific in our world. The evolutionists actually carry the ruse so far as to declare natural selection as the explanation for symbiotic relationships, once again defying all scientific logic. This really is an embarrassing conundrum for the evolutionist who refuses to observe 
the glory of God right before his eyes. <laughs>